Hi everyone, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic day. First off, let me uh, apologize if you can hear a lot of construction outside. They decided to build a house in the middle of winter, five feet from the right hand side of my house. Terrific, terrific, lovely time right now. Merry Christmas, Dawn. <laughs> Well, we have two stories, well, three stories, really. We have one story of a person who just filed a lawsuit against a cruise line because uh, they were injured from flying champagne cork. Okay. Uh, number two, we have a passenger who went missing on a shore excursion for over two days. That's right, lost in the woods for two days on a shore excursion. And then we have some people on the Carnival Sunshine who got back from their rough cruise. It was very rough season, everything, only to find out, hey, uh, guess what? Your car is all damaged. So our first story, we have a man in New York City is uh, suing a cruise line because they said that the champagne cork popped off and hit them in the eye, broke through the wire cage, they called it. And in my head, the first thing, because I'm not a big drinker, especially champagne, and the first thing I thought of was like a, a display case. Did it break through a display case and popped and hit him in the eye? Uh, no, I, what they're talking about is the wire that goes around the champagne bottle and then you put the cover on it and that's what keeps the cork down under pressure, et cetera, for transportation. Okay, and he says it popped off and he, the uh, lawsuit say, states that the cruise line should have been aware that this is a possibility that these things can pop off. And they said many reasons could be for this. One of the reasons could be that it wasn't stored at the proper temperature. Another reason for this happening is it wasn't transported properly. Trouble is, they're giving reasons of what could have happened. They didn't give a re an actual, this is what happened. And that makes it hard in a lawsuit. Now, will this go to trial? We'll see. It might just be, you know, we'll pay it off and, and we'll settle or get rid of it kind of thing. But it also, in the, in the lawsuit, doesn't state where this took place. So did it take place in the restaurant, in a bar? Did it take place in the person's stateroom and they were opening or looking at their own bottle of champagne? I mean, for a cork to hit you in the eye, if it's on a table and it bounces up and hits you in the eye, that is a rare occurrence that, could, that can happen. But if you're looking at it or doing something with it like this, you see where, where I'm getting at. So we'll see what happens with that lawsuit. But uh, I figured with New Year's approaching and everyone celebrating, I'll just keep you an, uh, a warning. Don't think of this as a way to get make some money from a cruise line by getting a cork in your eye and suing them. <laughs> Next, we have a story, which is kind of scary in a way, where a, a woman got off of a cruise ship and she went and took a taxi or a bus to what's called the Grand Etang. It's a, it's a beautiful wooded area in Grenada and they, uh, she asked directions to the waterfall. Well, off she went and she couldn't find the waterfall and then couldn't find her way back. Luckily for her, at one point, she was able to get a phone signal out and called home, who then called the cruise line, who then called the authorities, and after spending two days in the mountainous region in the forest, the police finally found her and brought her back. Uh, yeah, wandering off on your own into the woods and maybe not taking the guided trails. Like I've done that in Norway, but it was, you know, a good walk too. It was like five five k up into the uh, into the mountains, but it was a it was a walkway path, a guided path. There, you know, I wasn't wandering off by myself. Don't know if that's what happened here, but scary story that you actually get off and lo and behold, you can't find your way back in the woods. Thankfully, she had a phone signal. 
thankfully she was able to reach somebody. Uh, it's surprising. I don't know if the cruise line was even aware that she was missing or she just, you know, late for the cruise and they chalked it off to somebody not coming back to the ship. Well, huh, crazy. Next we have some really devastating news for some passengers getting off the Carnival Sunshine. But before I get there, let me just invite you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. If you want to keep up to date with everything going on in cruising, from these kind of stories to what not to do, like wander off into the woods by yourself, to the new ships coming online, like the Sun Princess, like the Celebrity Ascent, and the Royal Caribbean's Icon of the Seas. I'm on the ball within the next 60 days. And uh, I'll bring them to you here. If you want to see them, you want to keep an eye on the news. If you want to make things just a little bit easier on your next cruise, I really hope you'll join us here. Try and keep it lighthearted. It doesn't cost a single thing to hit that little button, but YouTube algorithm goes, hey, hey, people, people seem to like this video or want to see more cruising content. And that's all it does. It shares it out to more people. And again, really do appreciate it. Okay. Passengers getting off the Carnival Sunshine uh, recently were really in for a rude awakening when they arrived. They had a pretty rough seas with the storms that are going on out there and they, they got back from the port and lo and behold in Charleston, they had a flood. They had a flood through the parking lot. And as they got back to the parking lot, they were told, yep, your cars aren't gonna start because there was a big flood. And cars nowadays with computers and all that, the more modern your car is, the less likely it's gonna start if it was in you know, any kind of submersive water out there. And the passengers basically worked with people around the parking lots as much as they could. Of course, the parking lot attendants, not the attendants, but the owners, at the port are saying, well, you know, we did everything we could. We helped people. We, you know, helped try to give boosts to cars. We arranged tow trucks for people, et cetera, et cetera. And then, of course, they add on to the end that they hold no responsibility or claim no responsibility for any loss or damage from passengers who leave things in the parking lot. You mean like my car that you're providing a service of parking my car, <laughs> right? Uh, I don't know if that one would hold up in an actual court of law. I am not a lawyer, but I do know, uh, I have seen law cases where people put up a sign saying, not responsible for any lost or stolen items. And, and just because you put up a sign doesn't mean you're not responsible if you're taking things from people. And in this case, they accepted the people's car to look after it while they were gone. That's a service they're providing. They have to have insurance for security and stuff like that. And an act of nature, I don't know where it's going to go. But people ended up paying, you know, seven and eight hundred dollars to get their cars towed, to get, you know, hotels over the evening, to Uber to the airport. Now, what are they, you know, the, uh, Lots of people devastated that how, who knows how much this is going to cost to, uh, to, to fix, right? You, who, how extensive is this damage? Some cars, if you're flooded too much, can actually be basically all the electronics is gone and it can be a total write-off. But uh, I found one funny thing in the article that says, yeah, older models that were like 10, 11 years old, when they got boosted, they started. Because <laughs> they don't have all the computer and electronics in it like most of our cars do these days. So unfortunate news for those on the Carnival Sunshine. What do you think? Do you think it's the parking lot responsible? Do you think it's the car owner's insurance that's responsible? I mean, it, it, it just happened to be bad weather and a flood. It's just, you know, you go away, you come back, and a tree is falling on your house. It's one of those random events, right? You can't plan for it, You, it just happens. But I don't know if, when you run a business, if you can accept somebody's items and not be responsible for those items, if you know what I mean. Well, 
let me know in the comments down below what you think and until next time i hope you appreciate this video if you did please give it a thumbs up to see more tips more tricks more travel vlogs from around the world hit that subscribe button until next time have yourself a safe and a great vacation